Welcome back to Emily in the Dark. Well, last time we found out Emily's deep, dark secret. And uh, we are heading on out with this key. The truth key. So I believe the next thing we're doing is we're going to be going to the doctor's apartment. Uh, so we can then go to the Arctic. However, there is something I'm wondering about. Something I don't know. I don't know if I should be concerned. Um, so last time, uh, I, I loaded up my, so what I did right now was I loaded up my autosave, uh, and it said I was in chapter two, and I'm not, I am in chapter four, and it does seem like everything here is where it should be, except one of my, uh, objectives is gone. Last time when we got a lagniap, I got an objective to, I believe, clean off, uh, Jeremy's portrait. That objective is not here. Now, if I go to the lanyaps, I mean, I have them. Toe tag was the one that I got that made that objective appear. I have it. You know, when you get these, it's permanent. It's permanent. The sign resembles a blessing, save that the first and little fingers are both folded beneath the thumb, whilst the second and third fingers are held up. Yep, the sign of submission. It's said to protect against evil. Much like the sign of the horns, which is quite similar, but has a reverse schema. You tell him, Juan. That the dark blessing is a sign of submission. A complete capitulation to our lesser selves. The sign only protects from evil in the sense that you become a part of it. Alright, let's get submissive. So that objective is not... I mean, that I have them. I have the things. Objective is not here. I don't know if that's gonna... prevent me from doing anything as we go. Uh, let's see, let's go to the map. I think we can just leave and go to the, uh, the doctor's apartment now. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll find out together whether or not, uh, the save got borked. I feel like this is a fairly borkable game. That if you were to say, uh-oh, like, something that wasn't supposed to happen, happened. I'm like, yeah, this seems like a game that probably is, as it is the case. No, that's locked. And the doctor's apartment is right out there. You figured it would have been easy to do that. To just go through there. I guess we're not doing that. I did take a glance at some, uh, some speedruns of this game to see what is actually involved. Turns out, uh, yeah, just borking the game like no tomorrow is the answer. A lot of the speedrun, like, doesn't even take place in bounds of the levels. Oh, wait, door's opening over there. I get in this one, maybe we're not actually. Oh, that's Ruth's room. That's still pink. Why is that still pink? What's well, locked? Doesn't matter. Maybe that was something for Carnby. I was about to say, we don't. We never got the key to open Jeremy's trunk. Uh, maybe we just don't do that as Emily. Maybe that's just a Carnby thing. All right, so eh, that the door to the well, it looks like the door that leads to servant stairs is not working. So, um, the door that leads to servant stairs down there is not working. Am I heading to the right place? Hold on. Do pay Doctor Gray a visit in his apartment. Yeah, that's what I thought we were doing. Map says this door's not work. Okay, there we go. It was just doing a little spooky thing there. All right, let's get into this apartment. Miss Hartwood, lock the door, will you? I'd rather not run into dear Dr. Gray if I can help it. This feels strange. So very strange. You know what it would have been cool? If, like, the entire room just looked like an Alone in the Dark 1 room. 
Like, Carnegie would still look the same, but everything else just looks like a, a room from that game. Emily felt detached, as if watching herself from across the room, awkwardly attempting to help Detective Conby solve the case of her missing uncle. What was happening to her? And why did this place feel so familiar? Why does it feel familiar? You okay? This place? It's like something from my childhood. It's just the private study of a very peculiar man. All right, well. I think this is it. I'm properly mad. You should be. Dr. Gray's playing with fire. They're set as a powder keg of loonies, all ready to play their part in a murderous cult. I'm trying to say I've lost my mind, Detective. The Hartwood curse is caught up with me. I'm sure you're exaggerating. Try to focus on whatever you've been doing. Right. Breaking the Dark Man's contract. Does it even matter anymore? Well, I mean, it depends on if we want to save old Jeremy. False book. And we know where we put this. There's a book missing. A secret door. Looks like it. Careful. Let me go first. So it doesn't look like there's anything else in here. I know that when I did this as Carnby, the toy, uh... Like the toy sheriff's badge, toy talisman maybe, uh, was here on the floor, but I already got that. I don't think there's anything for here for me to grab. Now we're talking. Great job, Emily. You know, there's a, a bed in here indicating that the doctor's bedroom is a secret room. You'd think that would just be a regular room and, like, the secret room would have, you know, be like some sort of mad science lab or something. Or, like, you know, sorceress, sorcery room or some such. Here's a mirror. I got furniture key. I can't believe I didn't see that before. Carnby said the same thing. Why would they see, why would they see that? They haven't been here before. Yep. Oh, there we go. Found anything? Oh, Dr. Gray's in so deep, I knew it. He's as mad as his patients. I mean, look at this. She who can till the soil of this sick world and begin again. The black goat of the woods with a thousand young. Absolute insanity. Good right. to finally meet you. Yeah, the first, uh, the first meeting, we read that the first time around. I have the strangest sensation that this is somehow Jeremy's room. What? No. This is Dr. Gray's private quarters. Was, uh, did Jeremy's bedroom in the first game look like this? I don't remember. I feel... I want to apologize, Detective, for my illicit behavior tonight. I'm glad you haven't given up on me and my uncle yet. Ah, oh, you got nothing to apologize for. In fact, you've been out of my hair for most of the evening, you're self-reliant, and you've been helping with your own particular brand of investigation. As far as I'm concerned, you're an exemplary client. Gives her a good old shoulder Thank pat you, there. Lord. Mr. Carnby. This has something to do with the numbers for the talisman. 
The snake dagger. Snake dagger. Yep, we read this. Got to use that snake dagger for a little old magic lobotomy. Right, we got the uh, the things. This is not open yet. Oh, it sounds like maybe we have a phone call. This is where the game crashed the first time. Looks like it's surviving it now. Hello? Who's there? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the Dark Man. You can't save him. Jeremy is with the Dark Man? Where? Who is he? What, what is the Dark Man? The Heartwood Curse. He will come for you too. The voice on the phone was somehow familiar, yet so strange. Who was that? I mean, we recognize the voice, but I guess that's the uh, the Jacob version. All right, slam that on. Um, let's see. Right, use talisman with the clock. All right, what were the numbers on this one? Yeah, this one ended up not actually having anything to do with the symbols around it. I think it was just the um, the direction of the arrows on the on the thing. If I remember that right. Because I think the first time I was, like, looking at the symbols around it, wondering, okay, which numbers are these? And then, like, they weren't... That didn't actually have anything to do with it. Okay, so let's see. Let's go with, uh, let's go with big. Big circle first. Let's try that first. And then medium circle. And then small circle. Nope, 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 it, it. Small circle, there we go. There we go. Yep. In the other room, it's right there. What in tarnation is that? You heard the telephone ring, right? No, the telephone's cut off. I tried calling the police earlier. Yeah, that's what I figured. Let's stutter our way hey. over to the wardrobe. Mr. Carnby? What? Nothing, right? That's a closet. That's right, Detective. I'll see you later. I have to finish this. You're going inside the closet? I know what it looks like, but I can't explain it, much less justify it. All right. You do what you have to do, miss. Goodbye, Detective. All right, well, Carnby wasn't looking. The icy wastes before her felt profound and deeply wrong. Like staring into a grisly wound, revealing bone under the fleshy mounds of muscle. Seeing layers of Jeremy that she would rather stay hidden. Look, none of us want to see Jeremy's layers. I think we, all can, we can all agree with that.
All right, we did read Throw this file. Stellarium. All right, so we go out into the weather. Now, my understanding is that we actually can get some visibility by shooting this. Like, I guess that's the purpose of it. Like, you can just run straight ahead. It's fine. But I guess, I guess you're supposed to light your way by doing this. I mean, I guess they're not actually lighting up now. It's fine. And you can see the hill, the mountainous terrain over there, which is where we're going. I was uh, advised to perhaps make a save game before we head up to see old Jake up here. Don't mind me, I'm just reloading my guns for some reason. I'm sure it's... Don't, you don't need to look over here. Actually, I never actually tried shooting on anyone with the flare gun. you think a shotgun would probably be better. Jake goes down. Of course, he don't he don't stay down. So we gotta liquor ourselves up. If the dark man is gonna be in the middle of your existence, Jeremy, then at least set everything up. Uh, okay, there we go.
I would wonder if maybe we can, like, not lobotomize him, but... Eh. It does set him on fire. There is, like, some visual thing happening there. Jeremy's not moving. I don't understand. Why are you here? I did everything you wanted to break the pact. What else can I do? Wait. It did work. That's why you're coming after me. You're in my head now. In that case, I hope you enjoy your stay. Emily, stop! Don't worry. We got you. I was kind of hoping she would smack the dark man with the painting tube. Speaking of painting, too, we didn't actually get the chance to uh, clean the painting. So, I don't, the objective wasn't there, so maybe I just can't do it. Are you alone? Was he in there with you? Miss Hot, what is up? Heard you almost painted the foyer with your own blood and guts. <laughs> Good to see you still in one piece. Stick around, will you? It's gonna be an exciting night. Good to see you made it, miss. And all that ruckus, a lot of give you a healthy dose of that sleeping juice. Wasn't sure you'd be waking up again. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Tried to shoot yourself. Sorry for the manhandling, but we just wanted to save you. You also stabbed Jeremy in the eye. Is he all right? Mm, he's a little strange, but everything else is back to normal. Really? I broke the pact? I don't know what you did, but it worked. Let's see you standing up, miss. Well, thank you for my painting tube. Grace remembers. Jeremy, are you okay? I'm so sorry for hurting you. How can you ever forgive me? Emily, I missed you so. I do hope you'll stay with me for a while. Uncle, what's wrong? Is it anesthesia? He, he seems so meek. I wish that was the case. It turns out that you managed to lobotomize him. It's actually quite impressive considering your technique. This is permanent? You sacrificed a piece of his mind to save the whole. It's a little like treating a bad knee by cutting off the leg. 
It's blunt, but it works. That's terrible. Perhaps. But at least he won't suffer anymore. Do you remember the dark man, Jeremy? Ah, yes. Where did he go? I hope he is doing all right. You see? With a violent stab, you made any future treatment quite redundant. I assume you will be bringing him with you back to New Orleans. I will. I just need to find Detective Carnby. Yeah, where did Detective Carnby go? Everything was back to normal. Did any of it really happen? What had Emily actually been doing all night? What had she been doing? Get, well, I mean, training to give a lobotomy, I guess. I'll be back soon, Jeremy. Then we'll go back to the city. How fun. I do like riding in the motor car. It is fun. Is there any chance he'll relapse back to his previous condition? None at all. He is forever cured from all worries and other difficult feelings. And all's well that ends well. Have you seen Detective Carnby? I'm sure he's around here somewhere, poking and prodding. Yeah, I mean, he seemed like he was onto something before uh, Emily went into the closet. Emily reluctantly accepted the bittersweet end to her journey. She had found Jeremy and brought him back to DeSetto. But at what cost? Partial blindness and permanent brain damage. Maybe it was for the best, she tried to tell herself. Jeremy did seem more docile, happier even. And whatever spell of insanity she had suffered herself, everything was finally set right. It was time to find Detective Conby and head back to New Orleans. All right, let's go find him. Also, uh, the Grace Without Horns objective is still there. Give the kids something to play with. Well, we can actually talk to Grace. She's down there. We can talk to her before uh, we do the tree thing. Well done, Miss Hartwood. You officially made Dorsetto the dullest place in existence again. Oh, thank you. Happy to be of service. I mean, they're going to have their party, you know, their tree party. They still have that. Have you seen Detective Carnby anywhere? <laughs> still chasing that lovable palooka around, are you? I'm sure you'll find him. Palooka is a good term for Carnby, I think. I think that's a pretty good uh, descriptor for for most of the ver versions of Carnby's. Can I write to you when I get back to town? <laughs> you are too sweet, Miss Hartwood. I'll look forward to reading all about your tedious routine. All right, so we're going to become pen pals. Writing to her about how we're uh, taking care of Jeremy now, because he, he's going to need someone. Can we have some gombo? Good to see you're still with us, miss. Are you hungry? No, thank you. I'm still a bit woozy. I mean, you can be woozy and still eat some gumbo. Ooh, is that gumbo? I make it every year. We set up a little feast by the wishing tree and start a new year together. Have you seen Mr. Carnby? I haven't seen him for a while. Maybe he left. Uh, he had the only car. That would be a problem. Looks like a storm's coming. Radio says it could get real bad. Floodings and such. I'm 
Well, I should probably get moving before the weather gets worse. Have you seen Detective Carnby? Not for a while, but he says he's gonna wait for you. Take care, Batiste. You too, Miss Emily. Almost forgot this was here. The very heart of Deserto, you know. Almost time to call on her. It's gonna be a fun time. Dance around the tree, hang a child, summon the the dark young. Everyone's gonna have fun. What is it that you do? Is it like the voodoo rituals you read about in the papers? I don't know, miss. I never saw one up close. My family has always been suspicious of the Hoodoon. Yeah, to be clear, this is not voodoo. The, the, the dark young has nothing to do with that. You haven't seen Detective Carnby, have you? No, and I hope he stays away. I don't think he would understand what is about to happen here. Do you know what's about to happen here? Just a little ceremony we do each year on the eve of St. John. We raise our glasses to the old wishing tree here and ask for a better year. Is it all for show? Or do you actually believe the tree can help? Well, I guess some of us do. I mean, Lottie and Mags are pretty invested. Taking it a little too far, you know. I mean, he says that, but he's the one who's gonna hang Grace. Sounds like you might be in a cult. <laughs> yeah, I can see how you think that. You'd think that. I mean, it's true, but also you'd think that. All right, well, there's Grace, and we do have this objective to give her something to play with, so let's see if we can do that. What are you doing? Preparing for the ceremony. This time she will come. I'm sure of it. Who's coming, Grace? The Black Goat of the Woods, the mother of a thousand young. I hope you find what you're looking for, Grace. Whatever it is that you need. That's a terrible thing to say. Yeah, let's give her something to play with. Surely you can think of something else to do with that, Grace. Hey, kid. It's not even a game you're doing. Nothing much. Yeah? Anything I'm gonna have to pay for? You're bored, aren't you? Yeah, I can tell. You wanna see if we can tear your mother away from the play? Can you believe they're still going? It's been hours. You forgot this. Well, I just didn't want you to think we had abandoned you in there. Can we go home? Yes, please. Can we? What? You guys didn't like the play? It was all right. A little difficult to follow. Oh, I agree. Let's just say there were moments where it uh, left me alone in the dark. <laughs> yeah! God. Woo! That's the name of the play. Whoa, what do you know? Did you like it, sweetie? 
There should have been a hedge maze. A hedge maze? Uh-huh. And pirates. <laughs> that would have been fun. Well, maybe next time. All right, I guess it was all a play. Odd ending for a play, though. But, I mean, maybe we'll get the hedge maze and the pirates next time. There's supposed to be a pirate in this one. We did not get a pirate. If they did, if they did make a new Alone in the Dark 2, there would have to be ghost pirates, though. All right, that's, uh... That's another ending we could- that's obviously not Emily's ending. To get that ending, uh, we got it when we got three specific Lagniaps. Um, I think one of them you were only able to get as Carnby, one of them you were only able to get as Emily. The third one was, like, the Toy Talisman, which we could find in the Doctor's apartment, so I guess either of them could have done that. Uh, so I guess you would have had to have done two playthroughs. Well, you would have to have finished one and been on your second one, at least, to get that ending. Uh, so that was not Emily's ending. Emily's ending, I guess, uh, we would not give Grace something to play with, and we would face the Dark Young. We could see if we can continue from there. I guess that would probably be, like, the secret ending. Since that's the one that would require... ...something from both playthroughs to do that. Jeremy, are you okay? Alright. Let's see if I can remember how to do this fight. Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Hell, oh, there are praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever there Ever praises, there praises, 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 praises and abundance and abundance black 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 to the black 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 what are you doing? This is madness! This heals what he's doing. She's just a child! Edward! Get out, Emily! We're leaving! No! The half of the attacker bus! No! Come with me! Oh, 
Emily thought that was a hell of a party. Emily Hartwood arrived only moments later. Together they said farewell and left the people of Desetto to their St. John's Eve festivities. As Conby sat down in the driver's seat, he was filled with a sense of melancholy. Emily didn't seem happy, just relieved that they were leaving, and Jeremy just sat quiet, like a dog beaten into submission. As he started up the car, Emily handed Detective Conby an envelope with the money she owed him. He sighed, accepted the bittersweet end, and drove back to New Orleans. So I am curious about this bit here with both Carnby and Emily's endings, how uh, the writer disagrees with how the game ends. No, nothing happened. Party was fine. Carnby and Emily got in the car with Jeremy, drove off. Nothing else happened. I'm, I'm curious as to what this is supposed to be. I have to stop that thing. It's going to kill everything in its way. But you have to admit, Emily, it would be pretty funny if you saw that thing just running around the countryside. Just in broad daylight. It would be a pretty funny sight. Like, I mean, you could call the police, you could call, you know, the, the governor to bring in, like, the National Guard. You don't have to talk about, like, what it is. You don't have to say it's, like, a supernatural being. You can just say there's, like, a really big, vicious animal running around. I don't know what it is, but it's dangerous and it's mauling people. Just leave it at that. Let the, you know, let the system take care of it. Oh, and by the way, when you call the governor, remember to shoot it in its, in its, like, nodules. Like, it has these little gross nodules. You'll know when you see them. So the main problem with this fight was not really the boss, it's the spiders. The spiders are coming. I mean, I call them spiders, but they don't really resemble spiders, do they? Not really. Like, they're small and they crawl along the ground, so I guess that's why I'm saying that, but they don't really look like spiders. I'm out of bullets! Do I hear one? I think I hear one. I don't see one. Maybe I'm wrong. No!
hear someone coming. There, there's one. boss actually got me usually it's the enemies and not the boss who's actually i think the boss actually got me with the final hit Anything else lying around? Now what does this do against the first phase? Oh yeah, it only takes one bullet.
never mind. I should do the QTE anyway. Wasn't sure if I would die if I did if I failed the QTE during that scene. It's hard to say. Emily, are you all right? I don't understand anything that just happened. What was that? The whole gang was a cult dedicated to something called the Black Goat of the Woods. I've been trying to gather as much information as I could. It was only after you started talking about monsters that I thought maybe there was some truth to all the nonsense I was finding. Where's Jeremy? Uncle, are you all right? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Don't say that. You made it out. Be happy. Okay? Hey, kid. You doing all right? It wasn't what I expected. But you can't always get what you want. You ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. Let's go. Can I come? Don't leave her. You have to take her to Hell's Kitchen. What on earth are you talking about? And so in this ending, Carnby never realized that he killed Grace's dad. Just one of those things. And like, yeah, the Hell's Kitchen thing was a reference to Alone in the Dark 2. That's where the game took place. Grace, of course, gets kidnapped. I mean, I don't know if she... I don't think Emily takes her to Hell's Kitchen. She gets kidnapped by ghost pirates. I mean, consider, I mean, considering the references in this ending and the, the Grace ending, it sounds like they really want to they really want to remake Alone in the Dark, too. I would like to see it. I don't know if I'll actually get the chance to do that. But yeah, sure. I would like to see uh, the remake of Alone in the Dark, too. Well. That's our third ending. We've gotten Grace and oh no, gotten Grace's ending, which I guess is like probably the final ending you would get. And we've gotten uh, Emily and Carnby's endings. I know Emily and Carnby have alternate endings. I for Carnby, I know that there is like one Lanyap that I missed that I need to go back to get. The thing I'm wondering about Emily, I can't get her Lanyap again. Like, I could redo chapter four, but I already have the thing. It doesn't let me take the thing again. So I'm not sure. I, I don't know if there's a problem there. Like, when you get a lanyap, it's permanent. You know, they carry over from game to game. So when I was playing as Emily, I had the everything Carnby collected. Uh, so the fact that it just didn't have that objective anymore after the one that I got after I got the toe tag. Like, if I replayed that, would that objective come up again? Like, the objective was supposed to be there to begin with. It's weird. I don't know what to think about that. So I do know that Carnby and Emily have alternate endings that you can get if you get certain lanyaps. Um, and in the case of Emily, after getting hers, there was, like, an additional objective to clean the portrait of Jeremy that she's been carrying around. And I guess if I did that, then I would be able to get the alternate ending. I don't know what's involved with Carnby's aside from getting the one thing that I missed. Um, I would like to see those endings. I just don't actually know if I can get Emily's at this point. 
or if the game just has a bug, which would not be surprising. It's a it's a buggy game. Well, I probably will want to examine that and see if it's possible to get those other endings at this point. Um, but probably right now is a good time to take a break from Alone in the Dark. Uh, three out of five endings gotten. I mean, the Emily and Carnby's regular endings were not that different. Uh, the Grace ending was very different, though, of course. Um, I do like the difference in the cutscenes and the tone of the characters that the two, uh, that Emily and Carnby have based on the playthrough. It would have been nice if the two of them were consistent. Like if, like when we play, were playing as Carnby and we were getting cutscenes where Emily was like doing a more realistic investigation. It would have been cool if that's what her playthrough was. I didn't expect it because that would mean that they would have made an entire campaign that did not have anything supernatural. And I really did not expect that they would have done that. Um, but I would have liked it if the two playthroughs were consistent with each other instead of just, like, one character having the main playthrough and the other one just not, uh, experiencing anything supernatural. I mean, but I've, I've enjoyed the game. It's jank. There's a whole lot of jank, certainly. Um, there's elements of the combat that I don't like, like... Obviously, you've seen here and there I've had trouble with the movement and the combat. And really, I think the reason for that is... The when you're controlling the characters, they feel heavy. Like, weighty. It's something that you'll see in games now and again. Usually, like, cinematic, narrative-heavy games where they want the character motion to feel, like, realistic like real people instead of video game characters. I don't like that in general. I prefer video game characters to control like some video game ass characters, which means being responsive. Uh, the characters on Alone in the Dark are not all that responsive because they have that heavy, weighty feeling to them. I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan. But, you know, overall, I do like a lot of what they were doing here. I do like the tone. Uh, I do like the the jazzy music that we get in the in now and again. I liked uh, the Dressetto Mansion. Like obviously they completely redesigned it. I enjoyed the mansion. I liked the Realms of the Haunting ish premise of that. As we went through the mansion, we would occasionally go into like another air, like an impossible area that was connected to it. I kind of like that. I like some of the uh, the cut the interactions between Emily and Carnby. Though I thought that uh, when we were playing as Carnby, uh, I thought there were some some very funny scenes of uh, of Carnby just appearing to be completely drunk and Emily att attempting to humor him. Um, I guess the question is. Would you have preferred this, or would you have preferred a more uh, straight-up remake of the first game? And I get the you know, like this is not like really a remake of the first game. This is a completely new game entirely, called Alone in the Dark, taking place at Dorsetto. Um, I don't know. I would have enjoyed like some of them. I would have enjoyed if this game contained some of the more madcap elements of the original such as being killed by an ashtray you know stuff like that uh maybe they thought that might be a little too goofy for a modern horror game i feel like a lot of people don't really like that element like, I, I don't know, uh, the impression I get reading people's impressions and looking at a few videos of people playing it, like, people don't really want comedy in a horror game. They want it to be more of a straight-up Silent Hill game and are kind of off-put when this game tries to get funny. I appreciate when it tries to get funny because, of, I mean, probably that's just because I played the original games, which can get very funny. Um... So I guess I went into, into this knowing this is not Silent Hill, though they do take some Silent Hillish elements. But that's really not what the that's really not what Alone in the Dark is. 
it's never been that. That's never been the tone, even in the more serious games. Um, it's a very, I think it's a very solid mid-range horror game. And I feel like we don't really get too many of these. So maybe I'm a bit more forgiving of its faults because of that. Um, but as far as this sort of game, I, I mentioned this before to the chat that, you know, we get the Resident Evil remakes. Those are very good. Then we go to, like, the indie level of horror game, because horror is a popular indie genre. But, like, in the middle there, you don't get a whole lot of this kind of thing. And I do appreciate seeing more of this kind of thing in, like, the mid-range space. So I've, I've enjoyed this game. Um... And I would like to get the other two endings, though honestly, I don't, I don't know if there if there will be a problem with me trying to get it. Like I don't know if the game is gonna not let me do it, at least with Emily's. I'm gonna have to find that out. But as far as right now, probably a good time to take a break from Alone in the Dark, as uh, Emily. Carnby, Grace, and Jeremy get in their car and go back to New Orleans. Absolutely nothing strange happened. At least that's what Cassandra says. But I mean, how good of a writer was Cassandra, really? Hopefully she finished her script for Slaughter Gulch so Alone in the Dark 3 can happen. I don't know if it mentioned if she finished that. <laughs> 